all still getting there. I can see one, two. The deep one for the last while. She's sitting down, especially. Hi everyone, uh, John McLeod from MacBit. Uh, we're just going to go over what we did on Saturday uh, at the Sunshine Coast. Pretty much, um, we just lost, I think, as far as the units go. We, we won um, ourselves just because we made a fair few changes um, during the meeting and we were lucky enough late to, to, to make those changes. Um, you can see on this sheet here that we're going to make a few changes to our gold sheets and our platinum sheets. So the people who are getting the gold and the platinum are, are going to see this. First two, the two things that are, are the major things that are going to you'll see is that in these green columns with the, the blue is just where they actually ran the horses. That first column is first, second, third and fourth. This is for trifectas, quinellas and, and, uh, and first fours. So the first column is what we think you should put in for first second, third and fourth and uh, that's that's pretty much where they ran so number nine run first in that you know, first, number 11 run second which we got it, third was number four and fourth we never missed, we missed it. So that's one thing that you'll be able to see our numbers for the um, the Quinellas, first fours, trifectas and all that sort of stuff and this blue column now is just going to be horses that um, are value. Now we're not going to, you know, because it's the gold the um, the platinum one is going to see that as well because they see our prices, but the gold one doesn't don't see our prices. But you will you will see whether the horse is value or not. So we're sort of thinking that we've got the you know the, our market is a bit shorter than the price. So they're the two columns that you're going to be able to see from now on. Uh, it's mostly for gold and uh, gold's going to get both platinum. Well, you get you get everything sort of thing, but you are going to see our um, our numbers for these you know trifectas, quinellas, first fours, as I keep on saying. Okay, we'll go back to how our sheet actually looked. Uh, just change this. What this does is just bring our prices in and how much we're having on things. You'll see what's happened now. You know the. This one here is just a market to only 30 using 33% of the of the map, whereas our true market over here is, is this one. Um, this just gives us a guide if we're wrong on our map. Well, what price did we have it? Um, you'll see in this race uh, we what we did um, as far as our black bookers go. Um, they went out really fast. They went out 5.3 lengths faster than average and got home slow. So the, the race isn't much good, um, that's for sure. But these two horses went quite good for what they did. You know, especially Bella Close, it worked early um, through that section, was wide, and it battled on quite well. So the horse went pretty good. You know, we didn't give it much chance at all, and, and it actually um, started a bit shorter than the, you know, around the $17 mark, which we thought was uh, really well unders, considering we had $198, so, but it went quite good. Uh, I think it run fourth, actually. Uh, yeah, it did. This Brazira, which we thought had a chance, um, it went good too. It raced on the pace and battled away. It was second up, so those two horses are worth following. This was a race that I, I just didn't know what to do with Flash Patch because it was coming off an Eagle Farm run a couple of starts ago, which I used, and you know what I feel about Eagle Farm ratings uh, away from that track. Um, I just don't want to use them, and uh, I did for this reason, for uh, an unknown reason, just to see where I had it. And uh, we had it around the 3:30 mark. I fiddled around in this race. You can see what we did. Um, we finished up doing. What did we do? did $114, that's all we did after all those bets. Uh, oh, I think I had a head-to-head -head bet in that race. Um, just not sure why we did that. Uh, oh, no, no, I, this horse one step aside, but I, had, I threw something on it um, at the $13. It shortened right up. It was a horse that I, I knew had gone quite good. Step aside the other day, uh, you know, I didn't give it a a hell of a lot. The sectionals were good, and um, you know I was just a little bit uh, under it, and I probably should have had more. I should have 
given it a bit more, which would have actually put me on it, because you can see what price I had it. I had it at 20s, and I was happy to throw a small bet on it at $13. So I had in the back of my mind, I really wanted to be on it, but I, I couldn't, uh, I, I should have actually shortened it up a little bit by giving it more, and then it would have put me on it a bit more, but I was lucky to get out of it. I was fiddling around in that race. Second race, um, uh, what did we do here? Just fiddled around again. It was a race that I was keen to back better than better lad, but I was very worried about the gate. It was going to be out here. I thought it went really good the other day. Um, Adam Sewell, geez, he lost the plot. Um, I'll just show you his run. Um, this is him out wide in the red colours. Uh, as soon as it comes up, right. Uh, he's out here now. That's him hunting forward now. I didn't. I wasn't that concerned with what he did coming out of the gates and going forward as hard as he did. He had the blinkers on it, and he pushed hard going forward. Now, but what the problem was was once he got here, you can see him ease, and he's got there. And thank you. And what he's done now is he started to kick it along again. Now they're going 100 mile an hour, and he wants to keep on forcing the issue. Now that was just uh, ridiculous. He could have eased, let the two of them ease back. They're going, as I said, they've gone about five and a half lengths, I think. Better than average. And he's fought on quite well. He's got the leader down after working. He's loomed to win and fought on and only got beaten, what, a blank and a half. So it was a big, big run. Bad, bad um, ride by that kid. Actually went 10 lengths above average and got home 13. So, you know, the race isn't much good, but he couldn't do any more than what he did. He just, he went, he went really good. And, you know, when they take him back to Caloundra or something like that, he'll just win. But we're not gonna get 33s or whatever it was um, on Saturday. I, uh, I actually missed the price on this horse and got the shits and didn't uh, really, really play in the race. So as I said, um, I just fiddled around, threw something on the head to head with Wavemaker and in Winham. Um, you know, the market was saying that it was that um, Wave Make was a dollar sixty and two seventy. Winham, we had it about a dollar twenty six ninety, and I finished up. Get, I got did get two dollars. Wave Maker at one stage, but it was only for a hundred. Just fiddle it around, sort of thing. I'm going to actually start betting up a bit bigger on the head to head. I think it's a, you know, something that's that looks pretty good, and you, but you just got to actually. Uh, you know, there's not much uh, liquidity in there, so you've got to fiddle around, but I'm going to try a bit bigger. We finished up doing, what, a hundred and something dollars on the race or something, so we didn't do much harm. Next race here, this is a race that um, we, we went okay at, even though Isotope was very short, we were able to play the, the you know, the trifectas and first fours, and you can see our numbers were okay. We, we got it. We only, we're only investing in the hours is $125 for the trifecta and $125 for the first fours. So we're just going to keep it fairly small for the time being until we see how it's going. And you know, it only paid $28.56 for the first four, but you know, we, we won something. We won five hundred on the on the on the race. So, you know, it was a easy sort of um, get. Head to head Goldsborough against Zinglong, we threw hundred and fifty on, on Goldsborough. And that's the market we had it. We had it. We had it opposite to what um, the market was, so we were quite happy to, to throw something on it. Next race, uh, Populist. Well, we liked it, um, but it did get to two. Well, you can see it got to two dollars fifty. We threw four hundred on it. I was a little bit concerned it backing up three weeks in a row, but this trainer is just a, such a good trainer, and you know, I shouldn't have worried about it. But I fiddled around. We threw something on it. We won 500 on the, on the race. We didn't bet on the on the on the first fours and trifectas just because we've got something over here to say don't do it or do it. It really has got to do with the value of the race. Um, I won't go into into too much with it, but you know you can work out whether you're getting the right value with all these numbers. And you would have actually got it. You would have won something, but not too much. This next race. Um, uh, this race. We've changed. You know, this, we've changed a lot of things on this one, and it was after the race I changed it. So um, prior to this race, I was happy to be on, on man to match um, each way. I thought it was the right, you know, right type of horse for this race. I was concerned about profit. I've always sort of been saying that it, 
it hasn't been going as well as what it could and it needs probably a spell. But the other day was a wind day and uh, I were trying to work out how we handle the wind. We've been working on it for a couple of years and we finally think we've found something that we can use wind days and this actually, this is what, how it changed. I think we had profit around $2.00 50 from memory and, and we had man to match around the 460 mark. Now what it does it did it forced it into $1.79. So um, you know we, I finished up I backed this early in the day. Uh, man to match had 300 and something by a thousand on it at the 750. I thought it would go right but second up um, it just didn't really put in. Uh, it was a bit flat. Just just wanted to get away from the fence as well. It looks like he needs to big open spaces this horse but has it worked out, you know, profit would have been, a, you know, a pretty good, it would have been a terrible watch because it came from last, but we would have had it fairly short. You can see if we had profit here, if it actually, if we put it where it was, which is probably back, fairly, fair way back, we would have had it $3. Now in the run, I think they bet $5 because it was so far back and all that stuff. So um, as it turned out, I, you know, we would have been we would have been probably winning something on it if we if I had changed it prior, but it just showed a few things up this wind side of things how we can use the ratings. You can see what happens with the first fours and the trifectas we would have lost because we never got the second and third horses, but it was saying not to bet anyway. In the in the four, sixth race, um, we uh, this is another race we changed um, mainly because of Gontantes. We we changed it to. We did have it fit really short early in the piece, just going back on last preparation, we had it $1.78. So I didn't, you know, I, I, it was a total guess whether whether it would come back um, to what it had done, especially having a little break, 28 days, and then go to the mile. So you can see we threw something on it at 0.5 the unit just to be on it if it, if it did get it right. But it was just a poor ride, you know, he just didn't know what to do, Aidan Thompson. He, he, he restrained it coming out of the gates and then he decided to go forward and he was three wide. But I, he wouldn't have won anyway, I don't think. Um, the horse uh, needed the run by the look of it. You can see what would have happened um, with the first fours. We would have missed the second one. Wapita, we only put it in for third. And the Miss Penfold, we would have run third or fourth. And we put it in for fourth, not third. Our favourite horse, Ballistic Boy, was able to win. Very strong win. Um, you know, just did what we thought uh, it could do two starts ago and it didn't do it. It's just going to be a horse that uh, needs to be ridden quiet and cold and hit the line and uh, they've found the trick to it. Gontante's was a forget run, the green is forget run, uh, Profit was a black booker there. Uh, next race, two black bookers, Silvera and Victory 8. Silvera went really good first, sort of with a little break, 56 days off. They, um, they went along slow and they got home pretty quickly and so it was a good effort to get down back our baby. We threw something on it, you know, very small bets, but we, we finished up winning 1700 on it just because I, I thought um, once we once I thought the win side of things, I, I it was able to make uh, back our baby a bit of, well, a fair bit longer than what I originally had it. And this is where we kicked in our wind and, and it helped us with Silvera. So we, were, we threw something on it, but I was betting backwards a bit just because I wasn't uh, totally sure whether we'd found the right scenario for these wind ratings. But we won something. The, the, uh, the exotics were really good. It worked out really good. Um, you know, Silvera beat uh, Baccarat Bay, Etana run third and Langro run fourth. And, you know, we were able to have a good result and I won 2200 on it. So it was a, we finished up a really good race. Um, the next race, we, this was another one that we were able to change just because of uh, profits winning. We were able to change Red Chase, who actually was one of the horses that uh, run second or third, or run third to uh, profits the other day in the wind day. You know, I think we had profit, uh, Red Chase around about the $14 mark. It shortened into five dollars fifty, which you know I threw something on it. Again, I was still sitting on the fence whether we'd found something that was right, but uh, it worked out quite well. Giuliano, I was really concerned. I knew I said on the he um, voicemail that with the blinkers on, whether she's going to stir up a bit, and she did. And uh, so I was, um, I was actually, if I change this, 
That's the price I originally had her after the wind, and I was keen to bet back it and red chase. I was going to back both of them, but when I seen her in the yard, I, I backed off and um, I, I was worried. So I had a hell of a lot more on Juliana early, and I, I was able to bail out in the run um, on Betfair. So I bailed out and only finished up with $75 on it. So that was quite good. We finished up winning, we hit the front. And the exotics, we knocked off 250 on it because I think Don't Waver run third and we didn't have it. Going on to the last, I didn't play here at all. Exotics was really good. Um, I didn't bet. Exotics finished up good. They, they, they pretty much fell into line. Um, we won a couple of hundred on the race, you know, and finished up winning 2200 on the exotics over, overall for the day. Uh, and as far as our punt goes, we won 2200, so it finished up okay. Vega 1 went really good, sectionals were just above par, minus 0.9, got home a little bit slow, but geez, it was fat in the yard, Vega 1, it's got to improve, it'll go forward. Disappointing, Ringo's a rock star, it was about $14 in the morning, we put something on it, um, in the unit side of things, and uh, when it, sh it shortened right up, that's why I didn't back it, because I missed the price. Um, but you know we had it around the 550 mark against a, I think it was about, it was definitely around 12, 14 dollars. So I should have been betting early and I didn't. But uh, it shortened right into 650, and I looked at the ratings that it's come out of, and it's probably went around about two lengths worse than what it did the other day. So um, you know, he's, but he's going to be a, that type of horse because he's had a few problems. He's had, um, uh, uh, what did he do? He um, He's got something wrong with his legs. I just can't remember what it was. But he, um, he's a, he's going to have, he's going to be an in and out type of horse, and that's what he was today. Vega one, definitely a black booker. So our black bookers for the day were Vega one, nothing in that one. Uh, Victory eight and Silvera. Victory eight ran on well against the sectional. They went slow. As I said, Silvera went good. Uh, Gun Tante's was just a forget run. Profits went really good. Can't believe it really. What it did, sectionals were great. I didn't write them down, but they were good. The last sec sectional, uh, nothing in that race. Goldsboro and Isotope. Goldsboro went really good. First start in the race and was able to lead through, going through a bit of above average two-year-old open race and then fought on well. Nice horse. Isotope's just flying. Uh, better lad, you can follow it again. And these two horses, maybe not as much Bellicose and Razira, just because the sectionals weren't that good. But, um, you know, they did go okay. But that's about all for us. Um, we, uh, again, the goal is going to get the numbers for these, and they're going to see the value. You won't see that column, but you'll see um, what horses are value in there. And that's for gold and platinum. All right, that's all from me. Hope you uh, get away with a couple of winners, or I hope we do as well, um, during the week, and uh, hopefully we can kick a few goals. I think Hong Kong, they finished up winning, I think, uh, yesterday. The the Platinum won, the, the actual goals didn't, uh, didn't win. I think um, Brad found a couple of winners at odds, especially the one in the last. I think they bet $13 into about $6. And there was another one, I think it was Mr. Stunning, he, backed in around the $20 and he put something on it as far as a unit so it was a bit of a mismatch of um, you know the gold and the platinum there unfortunately the gold our bigger bets actually lost and the smaller bets of the big odds did actually win but that's the way it is um, all right that's all from me and we'll see you next week